Sunday school. I hope that you got your snacks. Um, I do want to say to the young adults who are here, uh, I want to thank y'all for bringing those snacks because it's been a few days <laughs> that uh, trying to get some stuff work around here and all of that kind of thing. So those snacks have actually become a uh, good stash for me. But I want to let y'all know I'm leaving a dollar for everything that y'all want. I'm not, I'm not just taking y'all snacks. I'm, I'm paying for um, and Stefan is uh, is collecting it as a as it goes along. Listen, we are we are, we're we're we're, we're in, a, in a in a time of change, if you will. Things are not normal as they are, as they would be, and that's clear to us. And so we we know uh, that there's nothing necessarily we can do to quote unquote change what is taking place, other than trusting God that God can make the change. Uh, but there's some things that I believe that we can do, or that we ought to be doing, even as the as the as the people of God. So uh, believe it or not, as this is unbeknownst to, to Sean and I in terms of conversation and the like, uh, he preached from he preached from Lamentation. What I want to share with you is one book over, going to the front, Jeremiah. Matter of fact, he even quoted the passage that I wanted to talk about, Jeremiah chapter twenty nine. He's going to actually turn there uh, with in your Bibles, and then also if you can get paper and pad, pad something to write on, just a couple three things I want to share with you briefly. If you were going forward, that I want us to remember for this week uh, and even for the weeks to come, because we are we are in a different situation, we are in a different circumstance than what we are normally would be in. And so, what we want to find out is what does God say to us in light of what we're going through. Right. And so, and so again, just just by way of title, just say, look, in the meantime, there's a there's a there's a meantime, there's a there's we we we, we believe. That God is going to give the cure for COVID-19. We believe that we're going to, we believe, what our hope is, and the expectancy, as Sean talked about, that we are going to go back to kind of our regular way of doing things. But right now, our reality is that's not where we are. That's not where we are. But in the meantime, what does God expect of us? What does he, what does he want us to do? Father, just help us now to see in your word. To know in your word that there's a direction and a purpose that you have for us. Yeah. There's a plan that you've already put in place for us. So help us now to just see in your word uh, in an in a indirect way in, to, in the terms of Jeremiah, a narrative, uh, a, a, re a realistic historical fact that took place. And how you call for the people of God to respond uh, even in that situation. So Lord, in the meantime. Help us again to uh, to be to do those things that that are pleasing to you. We ask it in Christ's name and His name alone. We pray, Amen. 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 We have been um, uh, we've had a couple of conference calls trying to determine how do we can stay connected. How do we continue to communicate uh, with one another? Uh, there's a group of uh, teachers and the like. We got together last week, I think. Uh, yeah, one day last week, last Thursday, I believe. It got on the phone, we were looking at some things with Zoom and all those kinds of things. Just kind of figuring out ways that we can stay connected, if you would, as, as the people of God. Um, and I got a couple, couple of phone calls in between, and I thought it was really interesting, and, I, and I'm actually taking it to heart, because what I'm recognizing, this is the reality, that, that many families are dealing with a totally different dynamic than what you're used to. Just a totally yeah. different dynamic than what yeah. you are used to. What I mean by this, what I mean by that is, is there are, we, it's clear to us, there are certain weeks at a time, especially uh, in the norm in terms of how we operate. There are certain weeks uh, at a time within a month, uh, in, uh, in, within a year, if you will, that everybody's home all day long. You know, mm -hmm. vacation, that happens. Uh, sometimes put family plan, plan uh, spring break and family, you know, together, vacation together and all of that sort of thing. But you're dealing with some different dynamics now. You got a whole lot of people who are working from home and even now you got the children learning from home. Mm -hmm. So I can just only imagine, once I had a couple of conversations, I can only imagine yeah. what's going on in some of the families. And so I want y'all to I'm praying for you all. Yeah. Uh, because I know y'all love each other, but I would imagine by now some of y'all have got on each other's twenty-seven thousand nerve. I would just imagine that's happening. You know? So, but what do we do? What do we do now that you know we're dealing with the issues that we're dealing with? In the meantime, between what what has transpired in terms of what we've heard about uh, since the coronavirus issue has started, and I hope, if you will. That, 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 that God, the expectation that God is going to change it, mm -hmm. 
What do we do in the meantime? Well, yeah. I wanted to go to, 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 to uh, Jeremiah 29 just to kind of set the tone. Uh, Sean is all, I mean, wonderful sermon. I Amen. think those of us who heard it are uh, definitely encouraged by the fact that what we said, hope starts here, right? It starts, it starts with us and our belief in God, our belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want you to think about this. Here, here it is. It is a whole nation, a whole yeah. nation, nation of Israel. Just kind of giving the backdrop. The whole nation of Israel is now in a total different country than they've been in. They are in a total different country. Uh, based on Jeremiah 29, uh, Israel is in a total different country than, they, than, than they've ever been in. All right? Mm -hmm. Why are they there? They are there because God, God has demonstrated he's God. And, and for, for many, many years now, uh, Israel has, and Judah, the, the, the southern nation, they have just messed around with other gods. They, you know, there's not been a loyalty to God like it should have been. Everybody kind of doing what they wanted to yes. do. And God reminded them, you go back to Deuteronomy 28, he would remind them in the word, you know, I got, I got blessings for you. Started verse 1 through verse 14. But then it says, I also got curses if you disobey me from six, from 15 to the end of the chapter. And, but we know her historically, what did Israel do? Israel rebelled against God. They didn't do what God said that they should have done. So, so now God has arranged that Israel or Judah, the, 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 the only two tribes left, the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin, they're now the only two tribes that are existing. But now because of that rebellion, God has moved them from Jerusalem to Babylon. Okay. They, you know, you're talking about over 600 miles that they had to travel. They had to, they had to pack up a lot of stuff in terms of, uh, uh, you know, that first trip that they took, uh, like in 605 BC with Daniel and Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, we call them Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, they, they had to take that trip. These were teenagers. And now they are found in a total different country. They're in a place that they don't want to be. Mm. They would prefer not to be. But God right. is allowing them to be there. Yeah. And, and, and here's what I want to, here's the first thing that I want to share with you. I actually want to write some things down if you would. Just, just, just to look at this. Acknowledge God's control. Acknowledge God's control. In the meantime, one of the things that we've got to do, we've got to acknowledge God's control. So when you're looking at Jeremiah chapter 29, that's what I want you to turn. Jeremiah chapter 29. You've got to acknowledge God's control. Acknowledge God's control. Notice what he says to us in verse number one. Now, these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the remainder of the elders who were carried away captive to the priests, uh, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. This happened after Jeconiah, the king, the queen mother, the eunuchs, the princes of Judah and Jerusalem. That's talking about Daniel and that crew. The craftsmen, the smiths had departed from Jerusalem. And the reason that he took all of those people is because Nebuchadnezzar was building this huge city. He was building, I mean, he had some architectural design that was just beyond uh, 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 human imagination even at that time. So he would take uh, artisans and people with skill from different countries and he would bring them to, to, uh, to Babylon in order that they might rebuild his city. So now he says this letter, verse 3, was sent by the hand of Elisa, the son of Shaphan, and Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, and Zedekiah, the king of Judah, sent to Babylon to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, saying, notice the language in verse 4. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all who are carried away captive, watch this, this is God saying, whom I have caused, mm -hmm. whom I have caused, whom I have caused yeah, to be yeah. carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. And the reason I'm saying that just from a practical standpoint, God, God, there are certain things that God has allowed. Listen, there are a lot of things that God decreed that God don't want to happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, God don't want us to kill, so he tell us stuff. But when we, people still kill. A lot of things that God said he don't want, but people still do it. And, the, and in his mercy, in his grace, in his sovereignty, God allows things to happen. But the reality is nothing can happen without God allowing it to happen. That's just, that's just the reality. You know, we can talk bad, bad about how bad Satan is, but he can't do nothing to us that God doesn't allow. So we're reminded that what he causes all things to work together for our good, right? So I want to say again to you, you got to acknowledge. You, you got to know for yourself. You got to acknowledge God's control. 
I, and, and, and I, would, I would encourage right where you're sitting right now, tell everybody in your family, God, God, God is in control. God got this. So, and notice the Bible says he caused them to now be in Babylon. He caused them to be in Babylon. And so, uh, uh, that, and that's verses one through four. But then the other thing I want you to see is that in the meantime, regardless of where we are, regardless of what's going on with our family, here's the other thing I want you to do. You got to always obey God's command. You got to always obey God's command. You will write that down. That's in verse five through nine. You got to always obey God's command. Because here's the thing. The people of Israel, they were not where they, Judah, they were not where they wanted to be. It was uncomfortable for them to be where they were. It was not a situation that they necessarily relished because one of the songs says, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? They were just disturbed by the fact that they were not at home. Are y'all getting that? They were not at home. They couldn't move around like they would in Jerusalem, visiting the folk that they normally visited and all of that sort of thing. They are totally in a total different foreign country that they have no idea of the terrain. They don't know the, they don't really know the laws that are there. It's just a total different situation that they're dealing with. But God is saying to the people of God that are in that city, you got to always obey God's command. Now notice how he helps them to understand that. Look at verse 5. He tells them, build houses, dwell in them. Watch this. Plant gardens and eat their fruit. Why? They're in a strange land, but he's giving the commands on what they're to do. And so, again, I'm saying this from a practical standpoint. You right now, many of you are in some inconvenient situations. You are, this is not comfortable. It's not where you want to be. There are some who are a little bit more anxious than others when it comes to, you know, um, uh, uh, the, you know the social distancing piece, the issue with washing your hands. And, and in some cases, sometimes I can be honest with you, I'm not, I don't know what to do sometimes. Right. Uh, I was in a setting yesterday and, and it was some folk coming. I know they were coming to hug me, but I, but y'all know what I did that for? I, I was like, yes. <laughs> I love you. I love. I love you. Uh, but but we're just not gonna do that kissing and hugging right now, you know, Be because this thing is serious. I mean, I mean, from yesterday to today, it's almost doubled up in the amount of deaths in the United States. So we know we're dealing with some serious issues here. So sometimes we don't even know what to do, how to handle this. So what I'm saying is, as a result of that, if anxiety comes up in us. You know, if we get weary, guess what? The folk that are around us, they'll get weary. So I want to say this especially to those of us who are the heads of our household, whether you are male or a female, you obey God's commands. If you stay steady, if you stay stable, if you don't get too nervous, I promise you everybody in your house yeah. is going gonna, is gonna, to is, is, is gonna be okay. They might have that moment, but yeah. when they can look at you, when they can hear you, there's a certain re a source of comfort that can come, a certain source of comfort that, that, that they can experience. So I just want to encourage you. If you're the head of your household, don't be the one causing the pain. Don't be the one. Don't. Ooh, when you say things to the children. I understand if you want them to change their clothes, whatever, because they touch something. But just don't, ah, don't, don't holler at them. Just, it's just making everybody nervous and everybody just, just unsettled. So, so what do you do? You obey God's command. So I'm saying, husbands, love your wives, man. I Christ love the church. Go remind her of those things. You dwell with her with understanding. Because I know y'all, some of you cats got some situations that, that your wife is looking at you crazy when you come home from work. Mm. Because, you know, you've been out working and she at home with the children. And when you come home, she would hope that you would give her some help with the children. But you feel too tired because... <laughs> And so now, y'all both looking at each other crazy. Well, notice what the Bible says. Yep. Husband, ah. Ephesians, I mean, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Husband, dwell with your wife in an understanding yeah. way. Fellas, you got to understand, this is not normal for her either. Right. She right. is going through some transition. She's right. going through some change. And it's a total yeah. different thing yeah. to be able again. It's one thing to be with your babies, uh, you know, like from, from 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Four o'clock in the afternoon, five o'clock in the afternoon, till ten o'clock when they go to bed. It's another thing. When you wake up in the morning, the child is there. And and I had one parent to tell me, say, Pastor, they don't do homework like we did it. No. No. They, 
that the way they do math wasn't like we did it and all that. But in the meantime, you got to keep in mind, you can't allow what's going on on the outside to control you. So God would say to Israel, or you say to Judah, he said, build your houses. In other words, just do the normal stuff that you would do. Mm -hmm. For those of us who think we got to stay in the house, can't go out, you go out. Please go out. Get you some fresh air. Yeah. Just kind of walk around, but watch. Just watch the social distancing. Just that's, that's what all they're saying. Trust God in the midst of it all. But you still got to do your normal uh, 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 issues of your home, the rearing of your children, the, the, the nurturing of the wife, and the, the respect for the husband, yeah. all of those things that God has commanded us to do. We still got to do those things. So we got to always, always obey God's command. I'm, again, yeah. notice I'm, and I'm doing a little, a little, Look, notice what he says. Verse 6. Take wives, beget sons and daughters, and take your wives for your sons and, and give your daughters you know, to husbands so that they bear sons and daughters, that they may be increased there and not diminished. In other words, you're not where you want to be, but I still want you to do the normal stuff that you right. would have done while you were in Jerusalem. Yeah. You're not where you want to be, but you still ought to be doing some of the normal things that you did. But now here's, here's what it takes to do that, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm about to close. Here's the last thing. you got to adjust. Adjust to God's challenges. All right. Adjust to God's challenges. That's what you got to do. We look at verse 10 and 11. All God is saying, listen, I've caused this to happen, but I want you to obey my word because when you do what I say, even though I've caused it to happen, I'm still going to take care of you. I want you to know I got you. I'm going to support you. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to uphold you. All those things that you need from me, I know how to provide it. Because now the issue is, it's not that God is going to adjust to us. He wants us now to adjust to the challenges that he's given us. Because I am convinced that God is testing our faith. I'm just convinced of that. I don't know everything that he's doing. But I know right now our faith is honestly being tested. So we got to adjust to the challenges that God has presented before us. So what do we do with that? Look at verse 10 and 11 and we're done. For thus says the Lord... After 70 years are complete. Yeah. I want y'all to notice that. Notice how long Israel had to make this adjustment. Oh, yeah. 70 years. Same. For 70 years. I know somebody asked, well, okay, Lord, I mean, Pastor, why was it 70 years? If you would read in uh, 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 2 Chronicles 36. I'm just, just encourage you to read the whole chapter. 2 Chronicles 36 really is at the end of the chapter. 2 Chronicles 36. Uh, it, it, it is a reminder that God had said to, to, the, uh, to the Levites to say to the people that, you remember, every seven days they rested, right? On the Sabbath day, it was the day of rest. Every seven years, they were to give the land rest, meaning that you plant your crops in the sixth year and you didn't plant the crops in the seventh year, but trust in God that what you planted in the sixth year was actually going to carry you over even into the eighth year. <laughs> but Israel failed to trust God. So for 70 Sabbaths, 70 Sabbaths of rest that they should have given the land, they didn't do it. So here's what God said. He said, okay, you didn't let the land rest. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take you out the land so that the land can rest. Isn't that something? So he's telling them in the meantime, but notice the meantime, 70 years. And most of us right now saying this thing done went too long already. It ought to be over right now, Lord. I mean, I understand a week or two, but I mean, right now, that's time for this thing to be over. But they were there for 70 years yeah. wow. with a reminder from one generation to another generation to another generation that they were going to have to make these adjustments because of the challenges that God had given them. So he says in verse 11, and I know this is a verse that people just love. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. But in that case, that future and that hope was going to ultimately be fulfilled 70 years later. Good God Almighty. Listen, folks, we don't know how long this is going to last. We don't know how long God is going to allow this to happen. But here is what he wants to do. He wants us to trust him in the meantime. Rely on him in the meantime. Obey him in the meantime. Adjust to the challenges that he has given us in the meantime. And understand, he's going to give you the creativity because he says, I know the hope that I have for you. But notice, he is saying that I'm not going to change that situation right now. 
But what I'm going to do, I'm going to change you for the situation. Yeah. And that's what I'm believing that God is doing with us. And we got to let him do that. Yes. If this situation is not going to change. It doesn't look like it's going to do it right now unless God does something pretty miraculous. Yeah. But here is what we can do. We can now allow God to change us right. for the situation. Does that make sense? Amen. Amen. Now before Amen. I close, anybody in here, group that's in here, anybody got any questions based on what you saw? I got to try to find a way so we can connect with everybody else that we can start asking some questions and connecting with each other. Anybody got any questions? JB, JB, no question. Ed, you got a question? No, you ain't got a question. All right. Well, listen, that's what I wanted to share with you just to just just briefly on today. This is just a way of uh, this is just a devotion and encouragement because these are some things that we need to apply. Don't forget who you are. You're still a Christian. Right. We're going through a crisis, That's but right. you're still a Christian. That's and right. God is still expecting us yeah. to obey. Yeah. Uh, as I said, I've been in some settings, man, where folk are just not, they're not, um, a, they're just, just one, more, one more story I got to tell you. I, I go to Fiesta, right? Go to Fiesta. Boston wanted something from Fiesta. Well, nothing crucial. But I figured, I said, okay, all right. So when I get when I get to Fiesta, I'm looking at people. They in line, and they all up on each other. Oh, yeah. And I'm saying... Wait a minute, I thought we were supposed to. So 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 I'm to the back of the line. I get all the way to the back of the line. I get myself to six feet, I think five or seven. And I promise y'all, I'm not doing any of this because I'm scared. I'm just trying to obey what they're saying because I understand this thing is very contagious. So I'm getting that. And so we get in the line, and all of a sudden it's a lady come behind me. And she had a basket. And I'm thinking, I'm saying, okay, well, you know, if we do the distance with the basket, we're gonna be fine. But the lady put the basket to the side and came and stood right. Wow. I was on the phone with Sugar. I said, Sugar, I'm leaving. I'm, leaving. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going, I'm going home. I say, I can't. Because oh. I'm going to say something right now that I probably shouldn't say because I can't believe this. I'm saying at least put the basket between us. So all I'm saying, I have, we have to adjust. God is still saying we got to be kind. We still say we got to be yeah. loving. Yeah. We still say we got to be compassionate. Yeah. I know, it's, I know it can get heated in the home, yeah. but I'm saying to the families, yeah. take a little break every yeah. now and then. If you're the leader of your family, every now and then, just take a little prayer break. Yeah. Yeah. Pray for your children. Yeah. Let them know you're concerned about them. Yeah. Ask them if they're scared, if they're afraid of anything. Talk to them yeah. through this situation. Because sometimes our babies, they, 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 they're trying to figure out, I'm watching Corey. You've been watching Corey. Corey's kind of figuring out, like, what is going on? Oh, okay. You know, why can't we go to the park and... And if we go to the park, we can't get on the playground. So yeah. why you want to go to the park? You can't get on the... So all yeah. our babies are dealing with all of that. Yeah. Spend some finish. time talking to them. Yeah. Fellas, be angry. Do not sin. Mm -hmm. Keep your hand to yourself. Mm -hmm. um, okay. uh, Stefan said, I mean, the domestic violence rate now is going up 33% uh -huh. wow. since the thing has started. And so we know there's a lot of tensions that are going on. But I'm saying to us as people Thanks. of God, let's, 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 let's calm down. Yeah. Let's trust yeah. God. Let's believe that he's going to make a way. Listen, until we meet again, our prayers that God continue to bless uh, and keep all of us. Father, love, we love you. And we thank you again just for the privilege of being able to, to gather together as we have on this day. We pray that you've been glorified in what we have said and done. And we pray that as we move forward, you continue to allow our minds to stay on you, to stay focused on what's more important. Not Corona, but Christ. We ask that you would help us to stay focused that way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love you. We'll see y'all later. Hold on. I got one more message that I need to share with you all. Oh, thank you. All right. Everybody with a, with a hand clap for me just one time. Larry Henry. Maxie, all recognized Celius and Catherine born of 13 years of marriage. And also Connie and Frank Smith, 51 years of marriage. God bless you. Listen, Amen. until we meet again, we'll be back on the air, be back communicating with each other Wednesday morning uh, at 1130, and I'll give you some instruction on what we will do also on Wednesday night. God bless you until we meet again. Bye-bye. Amen. Good stuff, man.